Hiya, I'm Chris Parkin. I'm here today with a ticker TAC A1. This is a T3X in the aluminium chassis. You may have seen me shoot this rifle before, but this is the brand new version in the Coyote Brown. I've just zeroed it on steel with a 95 grain VMAX from Federal, and I'm now swapping over to some slightly heavy 140 grain soft points. Um, just for this primary stage of running in the barrel, I'm not wasting the best ammunition because I've got some very nice uh, 140 grain Burger match ammunition also from Federal and that's what I'm going to be using it when I get on the steel at distance. Just ringing some now at 150 metres, um, we'll probably just need to tweak it a little bit after changing from the 95 to the 140, but uh, as you can see we've got a nice magazine feed here, I'm just going to load up and Dave's going to turn his phone off. Okay, from the 95s, that's probably just dropped maybe two, three clicks. And that's spot on already. Um, it's a nice rig set up this. We've got adjustability on the cheek piece, adjustability on the recoil pad. It doesn't have length of pull adjust, but uh, we've got a various accessory packets to um, add picatinny, picatinny rails and sling studs and things to the fore end and we've got quick detach at the rear uh, mounting points here for biathlon type slings. As I say, not massively set up yet, it's got an inboard, uh, inboard um, picatinny rail on it. I've added, added some Burris uh, XTR signature rings with the uh, 5 MOA inserts just for a little bit more. The rail I think is a 20 to start with. And this is the brand new Steiner MX uh, sorry, M7XI scope. Uh, this is not the full electronic version, which you'll notice will have a big back end on it. This is the plain uh, daylight version for probably what most of us are going to use it for. First focal plane, great optics, full control of parallax adjustment, a nice set of turrets for wind and elevation. Onboard mill radian reticle, which matches perfectly, obviously first focal plane, and we've got illumination on the side. Um, that's it really for today. I'm just getting it set up, running a bit. I'll give the barrel a good clean tonight and hopefully sometime over the Christmas holidays I'll get a chance to get out and get on the moors and do some proper ringing of steel at distance. Thanks for watching, keep in touch. For those of you who aren't familiar with the um, Ticker T3X TAC, we've got the regular T3X action in there. It's got a two-stage trigger on this one, and we've got a, a staggered column 10-round magazine. This one's got uh, a Stella moderator on it. I think it's threaded 18 by 1. I didn't actually check it. I just screwed it on. They sent me it very thankfully. We've got the usual 90-degree bolt from a T3X, which is a delight to use. And of course, like any decent TAC rifle should have, there's a button there and we can fold it up. That's very handy for getting the bolt out, cleaning and things like that. Most importantly, that hinge is absolutely rock solid. Now, it's an AR15 grip design. This one's got a nice dotted, spotty, grippy rubber one on. And to be fair, it's not too short for length of pull. Length of pull on the back end is I personally think a teeny, teeny bit short. Um, I need to just check out on any adjustability of it because we've got a buffer tube here. I might be able to stretch that a tiny bit, but I think we're going to need spaces on the back end just to just to come out a little bit more. It's uh, just under 14 inches, which is about 350 millimeters. I personally want to go 14, 350, but it can vary in the winter like today. It's maybe what four or five degrees. I've got a bit of clothing on, but not too much. I want it a bit shorter. We are shooting it in the summer. You know, just onto a t-shirt or a shirt, I would definitely want to go 14 and a quarter, maybe even 14 and a half. But it's not the end of the world. Plenty of eye relief adjustability on this long rail. Um, and we've got a nice eye box on this Steiner. It's a 4 to 28 magnification range with a 56mm front end. Fast focus at the eyepiece, and it's got a nice collar for zooming. And you can maybe see here, there's a big wing which makes it easy to get hold of. Now, 
These are zero stop turrets and they have got turn indicators on them. I've only just zeroed the rifle today. We're zeroed at 13.3 mil, so I need to sort those out when I get back to the workbench at home. I'm not one for doing them in the field because they can be a bit of a fad, especially the first time. You can lose little bits off things. I don't think this one looks uh, particularly uh, tricky to do. Just a couple of one and a half mil or maybe two mil Allen keys. Um, and you can see on the 4N, we've got a 24 inch ticker uh, hammer forged barrel. These are cold hammer forged, great barrels made on the same machines that Seiko are. I've never had a bad one on a ticker. Again, the Stellar Mod. It comes with accessory parts for this M-Lock rail. Uh, whether you want to use them or not depends on what type of bipod you want to use. You might want to put a Picatinny on for, for an Atlas bipod, something like that. Or I like Harris personally, so I just put a screw on, uh, I think it's a number eight Harris adapter that fits the, the Harris on there. So we're all zeroed. Everything's looking happy. Mag's loaded up. These are 140 grain soft points and we'll have a few shots on the steel. Um, it is zero now, so theoretically I should hit it on the kill zone. Dave's just been out and re-sprayed it, thanks Dave. Uh, and we'll be recording it on the Hawk uh, Endurance CD camera. Um, spotting scope with the good old iPhone on board, which does a great job of recording. So, let's stick with it. He says, as he's just wiped mud all over that first round from the rear bag he dropped on the floor. Yep, more than happy with that. Improvised rest position today. I've got a nice big bale of haylage. It's great for shooting off. It's not as good as prone or off a solid bench, but I actually like it, especially in the uh, field environment. Gives you a great cross testing capability. Not quite the uh, full range setup, not quite hunting, but um, a good solid position to test the rifle and the shooter. So, Let's get this home, let's get it onto YouTube and let's combine the video from the iPhone with the target so you can see what happened at my end of the equation. Speak to you later. So, if you like my videos, like and subscribe because a lot more will be here to come. Dave, have a shot with the rifle because you do all the filming and you never get to play with the guns.